All right, Parker. So to begin this, can you tell us like a little bit about yourself, where you're from, where you went to school? Um, so I was born and raised here in the Sioux. I'm 37 years old. Spent my 18th season coaching here. I um, went to school here at Lake State, studied fire science. Um, I've been coaching youth hockey in the area. Um, did a lot of U18, U16. Um, coached uh, junior A for a period of time. Um, came here in the well, 2015, 2016. Um, tried starting the men's ACHA program. We ran that for a couple years, um, and then went back to coaching U18 hockey and. Here we are now. Okay, and then when you did come to school here originally, was there a club team that you played on? Or? <laughs> um, yeah, there was club hockey. Um, so I attended college here um, in the early 2000s, um, and it was very much, ACHA hockey was just getting going in the early 2000s, um, and it was very club. There was really no structure to it. Um, it was it was pickup hockey at best for the most part. You had a couple schools that were really kind of separated themselves from other programs, but um, wasn't supported by the university. Um, and it was a group of guys, group of college age buddies that we just got together and we played some teams. Do you think the ACHA as a whole has come together and built a steady basis around themselves? Oh, I think ACHA has absolutely exploded. Um, there's more ACHA teams than there is NCAA teams. Um, I think ACHA as a whole is doing a very good job in filling that gap between NCAA sports um, where you have a lot of athletes that aren't necessarily, they're not going to go NCAA D1, but they're still great athletes where a lot of these schools are understanding they can fill this gap um, with these students and offer them something great. I think ACHA, um, aside from, you know, the NCAA D1, that will always be the cream of the crop. Um, I think in short order, ACHA is going to really envelop a lot of college hockey. Okay. Um, then when when did the women's ACHA team start? When did their program begin? Uh, the program, so they did, a, they tried, their original go at it was the same year that we tried the first time with the men's team, 2015-16. Uh, um, again, um, student ran, uh, not a great deal of structure, um, didn't get off the ground. So my, I was hired in June of 2020, um, right in the, the heat of COVID and all that stuff. And that was our first year. Um, we got the team together. We had a good recruiting class that came in. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID, we were only able to play a semester. Um, so this has been our first full year. We're in our second year of existence, um, but this is our first full season of competing in the CCWHA. Okay. And then last year, was that rough of COVID? Yeah. How did the season go in general? Um, didn't win a game last year. Um, it was I, I enjoyed it for the sense of being able to get our feet wet, understand college hockey, understand what it takes, um, the traveling, um, the time commitment from the girls, academics, everything like that. It was an unfortunate year with COVID, um, but it was a great year for us to get to learn the process and not just jump into it straight on right into a full season. Um, so it was it was very beneficial and I got to make a lot of connections with other ACHA women's coaches. Um, got to really get a good look in traveling to some places where how other teams operated, what they were doing and what they were offering. So unfortunately only getting to play about 12 games, we didn't win a game. Um, so it was a tough year in regards to that, um, but it was a good year for building and we were definitely, we were in the waiting pool of ACHA and it was great to get our feet wet. Okay. Uh, as we all know, the season's been phenomenal. Uh, the girls are playing very well. What uh, what was that process over summer to get some new recruits in, maybe strengthen up some of the returning players from last year? Um, yeah, it was a long summer. Um, it was a long year. It was a long summer. Um, I'm very competitive. Um, being born and raised here, um, my family being involved in Laker hockey since I was alive. Um, I was born after a Laker hockey game. Um, so coming here and being local and getting the opportunity to do it with you know one of my best friends who's the men's head coach, um, I wasn't going to fail at it. I did not want to fail at it. Um, and I wanted to find good quality people from around the country that were interested in doing the same thing and making history here at Lake State. They've never had a legitimate women's program like this. Um, so my recruiting was all over the country. I was uh, lucky where we were nearly fully funded program that the university allows us to really go out and recruit well. Um, so I spent a week at Denver at the U19 Nationals um, and was able to get a couple girls this incoming fall that played. Um, and we have three more, four more that'll be joining us for the fall of 22 um, that were at that tournament that they competed at. 
Um, and my recruiting was just all over the country. Um, we got some, I got a huge, huge, huge recruit for us was obviously um, Reagan Aykroyd and Matty Pot um, coming out of Western Canada, out of Alberta, um, out of Okotoks and St. Alberta, um, St. Albert. Um, those, those two girls, what they brought to this program were massive. Um, Heather Lamb, um, who's local in St. Ignace, um, was playing NCAA D3 hockey. Um, things just weren't really jiving the way that she'd like them to. Um, having her come in and be a leader was absolutely massive. And then the girls that withstood last year and dealt with everything and pushed through everything and believed in me as a coach, when I told them that, you know, I'll build a program around you, keep keep going, keep going. Um, you know, Tori Mishak, who did that, and she stood through it all. Megan Gary, um, who stood through it all, and Hallie McLaughlin, you know, those three girls were pivotal in – staying true to it and Autumn Bosmore you know our goaltending um, has been a huge anchor for us in this season you know we have two of the best goalies in the league um, and for those group of girls to stick with it and not leave me not leave this program um, and stand by my side and believe in me and adding what we added with the mixture of them I mean I you know these girls have what done it has definitely not been um, me in the sense that they they're the ones that go out and play the game they're the ones that go out and put the effort I do my best to put the pieces together, you know, having the Macolo twins, Maddie Hornstra, um, getting a lot of these girls that have been playing hockey, um, Malia Adams, where they've all at some point played together. Um, Sophie Jaremko is, you know, one of the leading scorers in the nation as well. Megan Gary is one of the leading scorers in the nation. So um, I just do my best to put the right pieces together. Um, these are the girls that make it work, and I couldn't be more blessed to have this group of girls and doing what they're doing. Is there any girl on the team that you recruited that you thought would be uh, would be good for the team but didn't think would do as good as they have been doing so far this season? Uh, great question. Sophie Triamco, 100%. Um, I knew Sophie was good. Um, I, you know, being across the river and as long as I've coached, um, I asked a lot of people over there, you know, what kind of player she was like and everything like that. Um, so I had high hopes for Sophie. I knew that she was going to be good. I knew she'd be a good teammate. Um, but to have the season that she's having, I believe she's got about 46 points in 20 games, 19 games. Um, so she's top five in the country in scoring. Um, definitely didn't see that coming. Um, she's she's a hard worker. She's an unbelievable worker. She moves her feet. You can see from the highlights or any film that you watch on her games. Um, she just goes and goes and goes. So I knew, I knew she would do well, um, but that's been an absolute blessing to have her have the statistical year that she's having. So she was, Probably the biggest surprise for us. Um, not a surprise for me in the sense that I knew she'd be good. Um, I didn't realize that she would have the career year that she's having in her freshman season. Amazing. So when we're looking at the season, we've had some ups and some downs with the season. Tell me some about like those ups of the season and then yeah. some of the downs. Um, great question. Um, you know, you go through ebbs and flows as a program. Um, I think anybody out there watching will understand from the women's side of the sport, you go through probably a little more little higher highs and a little lower lows. Um, I pushed them really hard for a semester. Um, you know, this is only my second season coaching women. Um, so I'm learning a lot as well as I go, um, as long as these, as well as these girls are learning. Um, I think I pushed them pretty hard at the first half of the season. Um, I scheduled our front half pretty heavy. Um, and I think you really saw that towards the end of the semester. Um, the girls kind of, I wore them down pretty quickly in the sense that, you know, we're on the ice four days a week. We were pushing hard, pushing hard, pushing hard. Um, end of the semester came around and just academics, I think, caught up. Um, we went on a three game skid. Yeah, you know, the only three games we've lost all season were back to back to back. Um, I think that was a pivotal point in our season where these girls understood that um, there's going to have adversity. You're going to have to deal with it. Things are going to happen. Um, I don't believe there's many championship teams out there um, that don't deal with adversity. Um, so that was definitely a low point for us. Um, probably one of the bigger games of the year for us was um, that Saturday game against Sioux College. You know, they came out and beat us that first game for our third loss in a row. You know, we lost to Adrian right before break, um, came back uh, right before school started, lost to Assiniboine, great program at Assiniboine. Um, unfortunately, due to some COVID issues, you know, I wasn't on the bench. We had some other key players we were missing. Um, and then first game back, second semester, um, Sioux College comes out and beats us uh, by a goal. Um, and then that game that we came back out, and I think we pretty well handled Sioux College, beat them 5-1 or 6-1. Um, and that was a turning point for our season. 
I think the girls really understood that things happen um, inside a locker room, inside the classroom, and really dealing with adversity. Um, and those girls shut the door on that and understanding that you got to close the noise and shut the noise out. Um, and that was that was probably one of our bigger moments of adversity that we've dealt with throughout the season. So, it, you know, it builds character in a team. Yeah, for sure. Now, when we're looking at the playoff picture, uh, all three teams that we'll be playing against, you know, you've either lost, tied, or won against all three of those. So what's the playoff picture looking like in your mind right now? I'm excited excited i couldn't be more excited for what we're doing this is these weekends are what you live for these are what you strive for um i think you know in retrospect this is probably going to be one of the best playoffs in acha d2 hockey um if you look across the nation i don't believe there's many top four teams in a single league that are this tight um anybody can beat anybody this weekend um, i'm going in there pushing these girls um, knowing that um, as you said, we beat every one of the teams, but we've also lost to a couple of them and tied one of them. Um, you go in there and you take Northern Lightly. They got Chloe Valente. Um, she's, you know, second leading scorer in the nation in points. Um, you go in there and you take Northern Lightly and she can get a couple by you. Um, Adrian's in the same boat. Adrian's got some phenomenal goaltending. Um, that girl's stopped more than 50 shots on us a couple times. Um, so if you have a couple breakdowns in Northern or Adrian's the quality of school that can capitalize on those breakdowns. Um, I believe her name's Hannah Taylor and she's the kind of girl that will stop those pucks for you. Um, and then Sioux College just, you know, they're just gritty. They'll get you. Um, they'll grind it out on you. And I think they're a team that a lot of people have probably looked over just because um, they haven't played a lot of games this year. Um, but it's going to be an exciting weekend. Um, you know, I have full intentions of going in there and I'll write winning the CCWHA and punching our ticket to nationals. Um, but it's going to be a hard fought weekend. This is probably going to be the toughest weekend of hockey so far this year that we've had. You touched on it a little bit, uh, winning the CCWHA and then going on to play it for the nationals. What's the mindset going into that if you do make it to nationals? Um, one game at a time. Um, so, a great question. Um, I shut that down with these girls pretty quickly, where I think that was something that we focused on too much at the beginning of the year. Um, we're just going one game at a time. Um, I want to win the CCWHA for these girls to experience, and you know we're making history here at Lake Superior State. Um, and to have the season we're having, um, to go from the one of the worst teams in the country to one of the best teams in the country, um, credit to these young ladies and these young women and the effort that they're putting in. Um, but we're going one game at a time. You know we're going to take Friday's game and hopefully win Friday's game, um, Saturday morning's game, hopefully win Saturday morning's game. Um, Saturday evening's game, hopefully we can go three and out there. Um, and then, you know, we win the CCWHA and then we'll think about St. Louis and figure out what we're gonna do right there. I, as a coach, hopefully have great ambitions of competing and winning and um, getting to St. Louis. Um, but at that point, you know, I wanna focus on the task at hand and what we have in front of us. And, you know, we can do this again after playoffs and hopefully we'll be talking about what yeah. we're gonna do in St. Louis. I'm going to backtrack just a little bit. Um, you mentioned the three-game loss streak that we went on earlier in the season. Uh, do you think if we didn't have that long extended winter break uh, where the girls didn't really get to practice together much because we had over a month, uh, do you think that could have changed a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. You know, 30 days off in any sport, anything, whether you're working your job, you're playing athletics, any day, anything, 30 days off is tough to come back from. Um, you know, the Assiniboine game, I kind of chalked that up as to just kind of a wash. Um, if Assiniboine hadn't been in the Sioux playing Sioux College um, and originally planning on coming over here, um, we wouldn't have ended up likely playing them. Um, their head coach has some ties here to the Sioux, um, so he reached out to me. Um, so that good game, good team, um, but 30 days off and to come back and face somebody like Assiniboine, um, that's tough. That's tough yeah. for anybody. Um, yeah, I believe that three that three game skid definitely had something to do with um, two game skid really. Um, Adrian beat us. Um, obviously, Adrian's a great team. Um, I think that was one of our one of our worst games of the year that we've played. Um, I think with academics and the stressors of college in general, exams um, kind of caught up to our girls there going hard four days in a row, you know, sometimes six out of seven days they're playing hockey, um, kind of caught up to them. But, you know, you know, no excuses. Um, it's something you learn from. It's something you grow from. Um, you know, 18 years of hockey, I've seen one team go undefeated in the regular season. 
you know, it's just not something you strive for. It's not something I think is always necessarily realistic. I don't believe as a coach you want to go undefeated. Um, I believe wholeheartedly that you need to be able to face adversity and deal with it and push through it um, and learn from it. So I think that three game skid for us, um, the timing of it was perfect. The teams that we lost to were perfect. Um, you know, knowing that we're going to hopefully see Assiniboine down the road. Um, obviously, we'll see Adrian. They're our third game in playoffs, which um, that could be that could be a make or break game. You know, playing Adrian Saturday night probably going to be the biggest game of the year in the CCWHA. Um, that could either be us ending Adrian's season, or that could be Adrian ending our season, um, or that could be a precursor to what the CCWHA championship game could look like. So, um, three good three good games to lose, great games to lose. Um, great teams to lose too, so they were exciting, exciting learning process. Um, I like learning games. I like learning. I like these girls learning lessons, um, and I think those are three games that the timing of them were good, um, and they taught us a lot of tough lessons. So, you talked about it a little bit. How different last season was to this season? What's the plan for you know the upcoming off season going into next year's season? What are you going to do to keep that ball rolling that you've had this year, that huge, you know, difference? Great question. Um, super, super great question. Um, we will be adding an ACHA Division One women's team um, and continuing our ACHA Division Two program. Um, so I'm out there recruiting again this year, um, looking to add more pieces of the puzzle. You know, we'll take a good core of the D2 that we have, um, move those girls up that can play at that D1 level, move them up to the D1. Um, we'll continue to recruit in some girls that um, didn't get a lot of opportunities to play this year at the D2 level. We'll get more opportunity to play next year um, and we'll add and hopefully continue the successes of our D2 program at the D2 level um, and then hopefully add some major pieces of the puzzle which um, we've added so far already. Um, we have a couple massive recruits coming out of Alberta, um, Chloe Boyko, um, she's a top four leading scorer in the Alberta Female Hockey League. Um, Kaylee Dixon's one of the best defensemen in the Alberta Female Hockey League. Um, and Asia, Asia Katchuk, um, one of the best goalies. Um, those are probably three of my biggest recruits that I've had all year. Um, and, oh, my bad. And three of my biggest recruits that I've had all year. Um, as well, we have um, Lindsay Tonello, Josie Rebo coming out of Kalkaska K-Stars. Um, and then we have Sarah Lamb, who's Heather's twin sister. Um, so what we've added moving forward, um, I believe our successes will continue. Um, I believe that we will have a good core of girls that'll be moving up, um, that'll be able to really get these freshmen coming in, um, acclimated pretty, quick, pretty quickly to ACHA hockey and just being a student athlete. Um, and I think a lot of girls on the D2 program, um, we're gonna have a D2 program that's gonna continue to um, hopefully be one of the better D2 programs in the CCWHA where um, girls that maybe didn't get a, a ton of playing time this season are gonna have a big, uh, big season where they're really gonna need to step up and um, be leaders within that program and continue to push that program to be successful. So I'll be back at it recruiting again all year, all summer, um, and really looking to put the pieces together for both programs so that we can be a premier destination for women's college hockey in the ACHA level. Uh, looking at the year, um, obviously we've had some amazing wins. Uh, what's your, what, what game impressed you the most by these Lady Lakers uh, in the sense that you went in knowing that the team was good, but our Lady Lakers were able to pull through and do to dominate? I got two weekends. I got, that's a, that's a double-edged sword. I got two weekends. Um, Northern Michigan, our first games of the year on the road. Um, that was, I mean, our first two legitimate wins as a program. Um, you can't take that away from anything. Um, we had Alyssa Ferguson in that. Um, she played huge for us. And to go in there against a program like Northern that's had an established ACHA women's program for quite a few years now and get those two wins was absolutely tremendous. Um, but probably the biggest games of my coaching career so far to date um, that have meant the most to me as a coach was Adrian. I mean, hands down. Um, Adrian's had women's hockey at Adrian. They're, they're you know, one of the staple programs in ACHA hockey for women's hockey. Um, so to go down to Adrian and sweep Adrian, um, I think was very much a statement for these girls to say, hey, we're here. 
we're going to be here, we're going to compete, we're coming for you. Um, we got absolutely demolished by Adrian last year, and I think they really enjoyed it. Um, our team wasn't the caliber, nearly obviously the caliber of what it was this year. It was our first year, um, and they enjoyed it, and that really kind of resonated with me. Um, you know, they say hockey players have a long memory. Um, that's something that I think I've always kind of sat on. Um, and since, since they swept us and um, did it pretty handily and they really enjoyed it, um, for lack of better words, kind of rubbed it in our face. Um, and for what our program was at the time, um, that really kind of, that got me going. And one of my goals all year was, I'm going to get you back. Um, I'm going to bring a program down here and I'm going to show you that we can compete and we will do it to you. Um, so for these girls, this group of girls to go all in um, and for us to go down there and sweep Adrian um, was a pivotal moment in our season. And that is for me in the last two years, um, probably the biggest win where I really think that set the tone for us this season, moving forward, knowing we can beat teams like Adrian, who are some of the best teams, one of the best programs in the country, um, was huge for us and absolutely pivotal. And I think that really, these girls knew at that point, at, at that moment, at that weekend, sweeping Adrian, um, they knew they belonged and they knew that we could do this. I, so I have one major question for you. The chemistry on this team is phenomenal. How do you think, like, especially with the first two lines, um, if we get down on the penalty kill, our players in the box, and we have two PK players out there that usually don't play with that player in the box, they come out and they're still able to, you know, put a point up on the boards in some cases. How, how are these girls able to build that chemistry so well? Um, I think that's an attribute, that's an attribute to these young ladies. Um, unfortunately, at the beginning of the year, you know, we lost Katie Robinson to a car accident. Um, and when you go through something like that as a team, um, you know, it puts a, it puts a time frame on your mortality. Um, it's unfortunately nothing that I ever want to go through again as a coach and nothing that I ever wish for a program to go through. Um, but it, it gives you something that you, you generally, for the most part, don't see and don't realize that, you know, our time on this earth is not guaranteed. You know, your time in this sport is not guaranteed. Um, and I think, you know, we all very much knew Katie. Um, she was a big part of our, she was going to be a big part of our program. She is a big part of our program. Um, you can probably look over my shoulder here and see the stickers that are on her helmets. Um, if you ever watch a game or see a game, it's something, you know, her jersey's always with us. Um, and I think these girls buying in, um, chemistry I think comes from everybody buying into the process. Um, I'm blessed with the group of women that we do have that they've bought into um, the passion that I have as a coach, the emotionalness that I have a, as a coach and understanding that you legitimately have to play every shift as if it may be your last shift. Um, in this competitive sport, you can go out there and you can blow a knee out and it can be your last shift. Um, so I think these girls have really all very much bought into the understanding that you have to play as if this is your last game and this could be your last shift. And even still, you know, at the beginning of the season, very much playing in a world of COVID, um, we didn't know at some point, you know, the league, the, the university, anything could be, hey, you know, this has popped off too much. We're going to be done playing. So um, that's that chemistry is definitely all on these young women um, and how they've bought into understanding that you have to, you can't take any shifts for granted. Um, this will sneak up on you, it will be done. I think you guys can probably both agree that this season went by pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, from, from when you guys jumped <laughs> yeah. on board at the beginning of the year to where we're at now. Um, and it goes by you and the unfortunate reality for um, women in hockey is there's not a lot of opportunities for them after. Um, and I've really drilled that home to my girls where you know this is it, this can be the last four or five years of your competitive career. Um, in every game, you know, like I tell my girls, every day you're one day closer to the last day of your career and how are you going to treat that? Mm -hmm. um, and when they can really buy into that and understanding that, you know, Friday's game's over, that's one less game you have in your career. Saturday's game's over, that's one day less you have in your career. And if you can play in a manner that you won't regret how you played Friday and Saturday, you will win games. Um, that effort will pay off. I believe in the hockey gods and I believe in effort. Um, and when you play in that fashion that you know that you're one day closer to the last day of your career, um, good things will happen. You'll get the bounces, you'll have that effort. Um, and I really think that's, you know, these girls have wholeheartedly bought into that process of knowing that, um, you know, whether you have three years left, that's gonna come quickly. 
um, in cherishing every moment that we have together in life, every moment that we have together in this team, um, and really going out there and playing for Katie and knowing that you know she should be here with us and we play in the fashion that she would play and you know not taking shifts off and you know winning the little battles and really going out there and proving that these young women belong in this sport and belong in this university. Pick up a question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what you just said kind of hits home for me, especially. Uh, I played hockey for 14 years. I'm only 20 years old. Uh, I started when I was young because my brothers were into it. I go play high school hockey, decent high school hockey program, very competitive. And my freshman year, I just remember uh, the seniors. They're all like, "It's gonna come up on you. It, you don't feel it until you're there." And even in the beginning of that senior year, it's just like oh, we're doing it again, and then at the end, you just don't know what's going to end. And that's probably, you know, you asked that great question about chemistry. Um, I think that's probably the basis of my coaching is understanding um, it's not always a fun thing to realize. It's not always a fun thing to understand. Um, but when you go through something like losing Katie and losing not just a player, but losing a person that Katie was, um, you know, she's everything that I hope my daughters can grow up to be like. Um, and I'm lucky where, you know, having somebody like her that was in my life and having somebody like these, like these young women who, um, you know, I'm able to raise my daughters, you know, God willing, where they get to grow up and see something like this and see these young women doing what they're doing. Um, and the chemistry side of it, like you say, is just these girls buying into understanding that, um, you know, your time in college is short. You know, you're only looking at four, maybe five years of college and, you know, something where you're hopefully going to live a long life in your 80s, 90s, whatever. Four or five years is a pretty, pretty minute period of time. Um, and getting them to understand that when this is over, it is over. You will never get this locker room back. You know, even moving forward, this team will change. Um, people in within these programs will change. Um, and knowing that you won't get this back, you won't get a season like this, it may never come again. You know, getting an opportunity to consistently be one of the top teams in the country, you know, end of the regular season, we're the number one team in the nation in ACHA D2. Um, that may never happen again. You know, the yeah. reality of it is it may never happen again. Um, hopefully in my time, that's something that we can repeat. Um, but getting these girls to understand that you're, you're creating history, you're making history, you're making these moments, um, you're writing the books yourself. Um, you know, one of those things where you get a lot of people that like to read history books and read you know, what this person did or what that person did. Um, I'm not much into that. I want to write my own book. Um, I want to take these group of girls and write our own pages. Um, and I really think that this chemistry and what they're doing this year is a testament to um, those girls looking at each other, looking at themselves within this program and going, knowing that they can do it and that they want to do it. And they're writing their own book in the history of here, you know, at Lake State, 75 years of a university that's you know, a well-known university nationally that's, you know, based in Hockey Town, And, you know, we've had one of the best Division One programs for a lot of years at a small school. And to now add women's hockey and be where we're at in year two um, is just a testament to these, you know, these young ladies. You know, I can't thank them enough. I wouldn't be in the position I am as a coach um, if it wasn't for them. You know, if it wasn't for their effort, I can't, I can't take any credit for it. I won't take any credit for it. Uh, because I can't get out on the ice and do it. I wish like heck I could, um, but I can't. It's them, um, and they deserve all the credit for it and what they're doing. I think a great question to end on is you get down to nationals, you win a national championship. What would that mean to you, and what would that mean to the team? <laughs> I'd cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd cry a lot. Um, it's, a, it's an emotional thing to think about for me. Um, that would be a, That would be... A lifelong dream it's hard to put into words you know you see some of these guys that win national championships and they win a stanley cup and they they, inter they get interviewed right after and it just it's something we've watched as kids and they have no words mm -hmm. um, because i don't think there's any words that encapsulate what that truly means um for me in 18 years of coaching um it would be the pinnacle of my career um it would be my stanley cup um it would be everything that i've sacrificed for um, being away from my family, missing missing time with my kids, missing my children's hockey games, missing you know time with them, missing time with my wife, missing time, just 
you miss time with your families, not in the sense of you actually miss it, but legitimately missing those moments um, that you can't get back as a father, you can't get back as a coach. Um, and then everything that everything that I dealt with and getting to this point as a coach, you know, um, 18 years of coaching, you know, eight of those years were driving to St. Agnes every day, you know, 50 minutes getting off work, working, you know, I was at one point, you know, I'd lost a job and the only other job I could find was being a plow truck driver. Um, so from three in the morning to three in the afternoon, I would plow. Uh, I'd meet my buddies, my other coaches that I was with still in all my, you know, my car hearts and jump in a truck and drive 45 minutes to St. Agnes where I'd get a nap in um, and then change and go out on the ice and practice for two hours. And, you know, I'd leave home at two o'clock in the morning and I wouldn't get back until, you know, 10 o'clock at night and get a bite to eat, go to sleep and go back at it the next day. Um, that, that national championship would be everything that would be worth it. You know, my, you know, I lost my dad a couple of years ago to a heart attack. Um, it would mean a lot for me knowing that, um, you know, my dad never got to see this. Um, my dad was the guy that brought me to Laker games, that got me into Laker hockey, um, that would be in the stands for every one of these games, watching these games. Um, so to win a national championship, um, for me personally, it would mean a lot knowing that, um, you know, missing my dad the way that I do for that. Um, you know, my mother, everything that she went through, you know, raising me and working multiple jobs, um, you know, my grandparents, and then all the coaches that I had before. Um, this is my first head coaching job. You know, two years into it, I've never, I was never a head coach prior to this. Um, so all the coaches that I learned from before, you know, prior to my buddies that I coached with, I'm learning everything from them. The people that owned our junior A hockey program that gave us an opportunity to get into junior hockey, you know, winning a national championship for me on a personal level would be a thank you to everybody that got me to where I'm at today. Um, and then to, for these young women to experience something like that and for this school, you know, to be the first national championship in women's hockey in Lake Superior State University's history um, and to add to the tradition in the national championships and hang a banner, um, you know, for me being born and raised here, you know, one of my best friends being Coach Canisto and us growing up in Laker hockey and watching that and watching, you know, Doug LaProds and Doug Waits and Mark Rements and Mark Ashley's and Darren Madeley's and, you know, John Graham, Blaine Locker, all these guys come through here. And to now from a coach's standpoint to be able to do something that you get to be in the, in the rafters with guys like that, um, dream come true doesn't even touch what it would mean to me so come talk to me then but no cameras I'll be crying I'll be crying for sure and then what, what do you think it means to the women for if, if that were to happen what do you going through a player's mindset man I can't imagine what this group of women would feel like in here winning a national championship um, gives me goosebumps um, I think we have a very intelligent group of women we have a very strong group of women um, I love them all very dearly. They're all a bunch of strong-willed, intelligent go-getters. I mean, these, this group of women that are in this locker room and a part of this program um, are gonna do some great things from criminal justice to nursing to um, business to engineering. Um, I know wholeheartedly that 10, 15 years down the road, these girls are gonna be changing the trajectory of what they do in their businesses. Um, and to win a national championship year two have the season we've had, gone through the adversity that we've gone through, you know, COVID, everything, the long bus rides, just everything. I can't imagine um, what it would be like for this group of um, this group of women to win it. You know, the girls that have moved a thousand miles away from home, seven hundred miles away from home to come in here and um, to cap off your year on a national championship. You know, I've only I've only experienced I've only competed in one tournament in eighteen years of coaching. Um, Coach K, 10 years of you know professional hockey, played Division One here at Lake State, um, played major juniors in the North American League and the United States Hockey League. He's only competed in one national tournament. Um, so between the two of us and the years of experience we've had, and we've only each respectively competed in one tournament, um, to be able to get that opportunity and get that experience, if you can go down there and you know God willing, the hockey gods help you out and you can come away and win a national championship. Um, it's a lifelong goal. It's a pinnacle of your sport. It's, you know, it's your Stanley Cup. It's 
it's everything. It sums up everything that you've worked hard. It validates every feeling that you've experienced. It validates your tears. It validates the heartache. It validates the losses. It validates the wins. You know, it, it, it makes you understand that everything you've gone through in a year, two years, everything that your parents went through to get you to this point, it's all worth it. It's the Stanley Cup, man. It's the Holy Grail. It's everything that you want in life as an athlete. Don't think those words any better. No, I don't either. Well, thank you for taking the time today to sit down and talk to us. Oh, I appreciate it, fellas. No, I, you guys are great. We love what you do and appreciate you having it. And hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get together again after playoffs and talk yeah. more about nationals. Absolutely. All right, fellas. Thank Thanks, you. guys.